Welcome to the St. Vrain Sports Report. We're glad to have you along with us. It is football playoff season, and uh, we've got a lot to get to, including we're going to preview the state semifinals with a couple of local teams playing this weekend. We're also going to look back at the quarterfinals, and we're going to get started with that with some highlights. A couple of big games last week. There were three games overall, but highlights of two of those. Let's get started with Erie uh, hosting. A uh, nice little celebration there. Uh, party atmosphere over at Erie High School uh, hosting the 3A quarterfinals against Green Mountain. And uh, Tigers coming in at 11-0 have been number one in the state, uh, at least in the rankings, uh, for uh, most of the season. Defense setting the tone early as Nathan Hackney sheds a blocker, gets the initial hit, and then some help from his teammates. Moments later, Noah Roper, he sidesteps uh, some traffic there and then absolutely turns on the Jets, races down the sidelines for a 31-yard touchdown. And we've seen that so many times from Roper over the years. And uh, he gets the Tigers on the board early in this one. Green Mountain looking to get something going on offense, but Jamison Nelms gets the sack, and the Rams have to punt once again. Gavin Mendoza then on the read option. Keeper gets a nice gain to get the drive started and get the Tigers over midfield. So it's not just a Noah Roper show, which is actually important. We'll get to that later. Uh, Roper again, though, this time straight up the middle as he busts through the Green Mountain defense for a 36-yard touchdown run. 14-0 lead for the Tigers in the first quarter. Roper with 140 yards on 19 carries in this game. Green Mountain still trying to get something going uh, despite uh, the 14-0 deficit. And uh, quarterback Trey Townsro finds Trey Corkin wide open uh, down for the deep pass before Roper is able to bring him down around the 35-yard line. Townsro then trying to make a play with his feet and does a good job on second down getting close to the first down marker, but he fumbles, loses the ball in Erie's Ian McDonald, recovers, and a big turnover there for Green Mountain and a big takeaway for Erie. And just before the half, Julian Costine throws a 34-yard field goal. Tigers up 17-0 at the break. Third quarter, Tigers knocking on the door again, and Roper with a nice run inside the 15, but that would be a costly run, and we'll get to that here in a little bit, but that would set up Gavin Mendoza for a one-yard touchdown run. Mendoza with 132 yards in total offense. Green Mountain just 146 yards as a team. Erie moves on. Pine Creek at Skyline, the number nine seeded Falcons, looking for the upset of the number one team in 4A. A Pine Creek team that had won three state titles in the previous five years. Fresh off their first playoff win in 19 years with Skyline. Pine Creek literally jumped into the early lead. Max Laffey goes airborne for the first score of the game for the Eagles, and they're up 7-0 early. Second quarter, Chase Silva steps back throws out to Kyle West, who does the rest and goes 15 yards for the touchdown. Two-point conversion failed, so the Falcons were down by one point. Pine Creek uh, quarterback Gavin Herberg then run for his life here as uh, he's in the end zone trying to avoid the safety, and he's able to do that, but Nick Black and Will Drews combined for the sack, pinning them deep in their territory. That would help set up Jeremy Hollingsworth for a four-yard touchdown run, and a two-point conversion was good this time. Falcons up 14-7 to seven in this one. Before the half, it was Laffey out of the Wildcat, taking the snap and finding his way into the end zone from a yard out to tie the game 14-14 at the halftime break. Third quarter and maybe the play of the game as Herberg drops back and is looking for a screen pass, but Drews tips the pass, snags it out of the air with a huge interception for the Falcons' defense and uh, gets them out near the 40-yard line just a huge play in, the, in this game. On offense, Hollingsworth going back to work with a nice run. Uh, and he thought he was in here for the touchdown, but marked out at the two-yard line. But no problem. Next play, he's going to take the handoff. And from two yards out, Hollingsworth gets into the end zone for his second touchdown of the day. Falcons lead 21 to 14 at that point. He finished with 72 yards on 27 carries. Pine Creek looking to respond as Herberg drops back to pass. But Oscar Arende slaps the ball out of his hand, and Ethan Drews recovers the fumble. So another big turnover for Skyline in this game, and they are in, in Pine Creek territory looking to capitalize on that, but they are unable to do that as uh, the fourth quarter starts. And early in the fourth quarter, Chase Silva with a rare mistake, missing the throw and having it picked off by Eddie Kyle, and he returns it past midfield. So Pine Creek in business, uh, down by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. That would set up this. A great job by Herberg stepping up in the pocket, pocket 
to avoid the pressure and an even better catch by Daniel Bone for the 24-yard touchdown. So the Eagles an extra point away from tying the game with about six minutes left. But the kick goes wide left, for, so Skyline maintains a one-point lead. Will Drews recovered a fumble late in the game, and Skyline moves on to the state semifinals because of that missed extra point and a, a nice recovery for the fumble uh, by Will Drews. So a uh, great job for Skyline, and uh, after 19 years of not winning any playoff games, they won two in a matter of a week or about eight days or so, and uh, we were able to catch up with Coach Mike Silva to talk about that victory against Pine Creek. It was a huge game, and uh, you know I think going in, we we not too many people outside of our our uh, program and, and locker room believe that that we could go with them. But you know we 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 all had that belief, and we all had the right mentality, and uh, we 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 went in, and played a great game. I think we executed and. Uh, we knew that there was going to be some ups and downs because that's a good football team. They're going to make some plays, and we just needed to stay uh, stay the course. And we did that, and, uh, and I thought we got some huge stops defensively, which allowed us to uh, to maintain our lead because we were able to get a lead there early, even though they scored first. We uh, we got the lead, and um, I thought we made some big plays to to keep that and. And like I said, from the beginning, take them into deep water, and we were able to do that in the uh, third and fourth quarter and, and made, make plays when we needed to. So, uh, so it, was, it, was, it was great. It was great atmosphere, great, great to be part of. Two, two good teams really battling it out. And, uh, and, and uh, again, i just glad to have been there and been part of it. It was awesome. Yeah, Skyline red hot right now and uh, feeling confident, more confident than they've been in a long time. But uh, unfortunately, on the other team uh, moving on, Erie has some bad news. Uh, they do move on, but uh, we showed you that run by Noah Roper. And, uh, and unfortunate for him, he did break a bone in his leg on that run. And uh, he is done for the rest of the season, no matter how far that goes. And just a shame for Erie with two games left, potentially two games left, that his fantastic career is over. Noah Roper, 2,229 yards, 37 touchdowns rushing this season. Has rushed for over 100 yards in every game this year. Also on defense, two interceptions. One of the top players on defense in the area as well. Career-wise, 6,339 yards, which is 10th in Colorado history for rushing. 83 touchdowns for his career in 30 career 100-yard games. This guy has been one of the best players in the area and in the state uh, for the last couple of years. Erie's really going to miss him as they move on to the semifinals. We were able to catch up with Coach Chad Cooper to talk about what that loss means for Erie. Uh, at first, you know, you feel bad for the kid, uh, how hard Noah has worked to get in this spot. Um, and with only two games left, you're like, man, he's right there to kind of finish this whole thing off. So I, I was disappointed for him. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, be all, we'll be okay. Uh, we've been talking about that. You know, football, more than any other game, is, isn't built on one guy. Um, we can't replace Noah. He's a special kid. Um, our philosophy is we need to all just do our jobs a little bit better. And if we do that, uh, we'll be good. We're still a very, very good team. We have a lot of good players. Uh, we weren't 12-0 and 0, um, for just because of Noah. He was a big part of that. But, you know, we got to have other guys now kind of help out with that. At Gavin Mendoza, I think it starts with him at quarterback. Um, after, after Noah went down in Green Mountain, he really stepped up, uh, had a couple good runs, threw the ball extremely well. Uh, Dean Lacero, number 11, comes in, We kind of do a two-quarterback thing. He's kind of like a slash guy to Dion, where we put him at different spots. Uh, he'll be key, so we're going to have to rely on them throwing the ball just a little bit more. Um, and then Tyler Gardner, number three, senior captain. Um, if there's a guy that can replace him, I think Tyler is a guy that can do that. Um, and then we have a couple other guys um, that we're going to put into spots, kind of be a running back by committee kind of mode. And uh, uh, we have talent. There's talent there. Um, obviously, like I said, no, no one can replace Noah, um, but those guys uh, carrying the ball and then uh, throwing the ball a little bit more, keeping teams kind of uneven. And then if you're Pueblo East, you're like, nah, I don't even know what they're, what are they going to do? Because <laughs> we don't have any tape of that. Um, so um, we just need to be creative and, and get our guys in good spots to, to be successful on Saturday. Yeah, Coach Cooper obviously has to keep the uh, confidence level up and keep his guys' heads up. But man, what a loss for Erie. I'm not sure I've seen in this area uh, uh, one player means so much to a team that, as Noah Roper has. It's really going to get tested um, how good that Erie team is later on, uh, later on this week in their playoff game. We're going to get to that in a second. We're going to go back to Class 4A and look at the matchup here for Skyline as they move on 
to the semifinals and the Falcons. Let's take a look at the uh, actually the, the 4A playoff picture. There are the quarterfinal scores. Skyline obviously gets the victory over Pine Creek. Ponderosa over Chatfield. Uh, Montrose uh, gets uh, the win over Greeley West and Loveland just cruising along the, the number two seed. But uh, boy, Loveland uh, might be on its way to a state title the way they're playing right now. The semifinal Skyline against Ponderosa and Loveland will be at Montrose. That's a tough trip for Loveland, uh, but again, the way they're playing, uh, they might be destined uh, for that state championship game next week. But uh, let's take a look at the matchup Skyline at Ponderosa coming up this Saturday at one o'clock uh, down at Echo Park Stadium in, in Parker. Uh, Skyline nine and three, Ponderosa 10 and two. They have won 10 in a row after a 0 and two start. Uh, both these teams over 30 points per game. Ponderosa has been playing much better defense this season than Skyline. Skyline, however, has been playing much better defense this year than they did a year ago, which is why they're in this position because they're getting some defense this year, whereas they didn't last year. You see the total yards there. Ponderosa, not very impressive. 267 yards per game. That's because they're really doing this on defense this year. Uh, statistically, not much uh, as impressive offensively about Ponderosa, but Skyline, of course, 403 yards per game. They're doing quite a bit. Now, Ponderosa's offense, while not uh, really overly impressive statistically, uh, they do present some challenge some challenges and Mike Silva talked about that this week. Uh, they're just really clean. They're really clean. They, they'll, they'll spread it out and then they'll bring it tight and they'll do that, you know, um, back to back plays. So that obviously poses a challenge. So we got to make sure that we're, we're, we're ready for that and um, um, stop the run first and foremost. You know, they're like Pine Creek. They'll, they'll do different formations to, to uh, make it look like they're wide open and sometimes they are. But more than anything, they want to run the ball. You know, and that's the recipe, I guess. For so, but we got to stop that. Um, and when they do run it, they they make no uh, they make no qualms about it. They're going to get in a power formation and they're going to come at you. And when they do, we have to be ready for that and and um, and and make some plays in that regard. And uh, and then, like I said, be versatile enough that we can we can go out and, and cover and drop into some different coverages to to help us out when they spread it out. Um, but that's, like I said, that's the challenge too. But they're, they're more than anything, they're just clean and they play hard and uh, they're not going to beat themselves. They're very well coached. Let's take a look at a couple of key players in this matchup between Skyline and Ponderosa. We're singling out uh, one player uh, for each team. But first off, that matchup, 1 p.m., Echo Park Stadium in Parker, Skyline at Ponderosa. Now for Skyline, we're highlighting Chase Silva, the quarterback. You can see his numbers right there. Obviously, he's had a great season. Uh, the sophomore started the year as the backup, came in as an injury replacement, and, and it's just been phenomenal. Now, Jeremy Hollingsworth, of course, 1,500 yards and 22 touchdowns on the ground. Kyle West, over 1,200 yards receiving. Uh, Jack Wathen at 948. He's, he should hit the 1,000-yard mark as well. Defensively, Ethan Drews has been phenomenal, as, as well as his brother Will. And now Ponderosa, we mentioned their defense has really led the way. Ryder Blair, the middle linebacker, not a big kid, six foot one, two hundred and five pounds. But look at those numbers: one hundred and forty-one tackles, twenty-one tackles for loss, and nine sacks. And he certainly does not do it alone. Now they've got a defensive end by the name of Ethan Waite, uh, six foot, two hundred thirty pounds. He has ten sacks, twenty-three tackles for loss. They've got four players with more than eleven tackles for loss. They just get it done on defense over there at Ponderosa. Now offensively, uh, Kobe Kircher, the running back. 757 yards and seven touchdowns. Again, not impressive numbers, uh, but they can run the football. They can throw a little bit as well. Uh, so Skyline's got to be on its game. They've got to play well offensively. And uh, Coach Silva talked about the challenge that his offense will face against that Ponderosa defense. It's tight. It's tighter space, and the game's faster when the defenses are better. So we have to be even more focused, and those moments are going to come this week. And that's the, that's the challenge because we, like I continued to say, we played our best game all season long against Pueblo West. And then we played our best game all season long against Pine Creek. And if we're to do the same thing here in the semifinals against Ponderosa, we've got to be able to function in those tight spaces. And um, that's what will elevate us to, to being able to play that best game this weekend. So that's, the, that's what we're going to try to do. I think they got some really good team speed, and again, they're just hard nosed. They, they, they'll they'll keep playing. They'll keep playing even in this last film. Uh, looked like they were uh, dead in the water against Chatfield, and they just kept playing and, and until good things happened. And um, that's good things happen when you play that way. And uh, 
you could say the same thing about them. They probably have played their best two games here in the playoffs because that's how you advance in these tournaments. And um, so that's the challenge. I think they, they want to be able to play their best game and, and we want to play our best game. And, and it should be a, another barn burner just like last Saturday. And that, that's the way it should be in the semifinals. So we're excited to be part of it. Skyline certainly with a tough challenge this week with the way they're playing. Like I said, they're more confident than they've been in a long time. That program's been waiting for a run like this. And after getting in last year and losing the first round, this year to get in and, uh, and win the first two games, uh, they're, they're rolling right now. And Ponderosa playing good football as well. Will be a tough challenge, but it should be a great game down there uh, in Parker at Echo Park Stadium. Uh, so look forward to seeing what Skyline can do in that game. Let's move on to the matchup with Erie, where the Tigers will go on the road uh, to Pueblo East at Dutch Clark Stadium Saturday at 1 o'clock. Let's take a look at that matchup real quick. Or the, I'm sorry, let's take a look at the 3A quarterfinals and, and playoff picture real quick. I'm jumping ahead. Um, Palisade over Meade. Uh, the the uh, Mavericks in that one trailed 27-7 to early in the fourth quarter. Scored 14 straight, including one in the final couple minutes. Tried an onside kick but did not recover it and come up just short. And so their season ends. A great season for the Mavericks. Kind of a rebuilding year for them, but to get to the quarterfinals, a really great year for them. Palmer Ridge dominates Harrison, and then you see a couple of shutouts there. Erie and Pueblo East uh, a combined 76 to nothing over their opponents, so they will move on and square off on Saturday. In the semifinals, Palmer Ridge will take on number one Palisade, and uh, Palmer Ridge, uh, the defending state champion, so that'll be quite a matchup down there in that other uh, semifinal matchup. But let's take a look at the Erie versus Pueblo East matchup. Uh, where these two teams come in uh, with some very good pedigree in, the, in recent years. Erie, 12-0 this season. They were in the state finals a year ago. Pueblo East recently won three straight state titles. And both these teams, you see, play pretty good offense, um, over five touchdowns per game. Erie has been playing great defense all season, but Pueblo East not bad either. Uh, total yards, uh, definitely the edge for Pueblo East because Erie has pretty much been on the ground with Noah Roper all year. They don't pass a whole lot. Uh, but that might have to change this week. Pueblo East putting up a lot of numbers, over 420 yards of total offense. And uh, we're able to talk to uh, Coach Chad Cooper for Erie, uh, just really about this team's mentality. This game, not so much, um, uh, certainly matchups will matter, but this game is really about their mentality with Noah Roper out. How do they pick themselves up and who rallies and, and who kind of steps in for Noah Roper? And Coach Chad Cooper talked to us about that. And that's the mentality we had since uh, since it went, since it happened. Is if you if senior class, if you uh, want to be defined as a, a team, this is the way to set the record straight for all time. You went on Saturday. No one can ever say you were just a one man team. If you beat Pueblo East down in Pueblo and then get to the state championship, uh, that's kind of been our mentality. Kind of yeah, everyone is picking against us. I bet, and that's fine. Uh, but let's show everyone what we can do. Um, it just allows kind of kids who have maybe been overshadowed, duly right, for what Noah's done to kind of step up and be on the forefront on Saturday. I, I see two teams that really know each other really well. Um, we've played each other in the playoffs the last two years. This is the third time. Um, obviously, they've had great success. They won three state titles in a row um, up until last year until we beat them in the first round. Uh, we've actually seen them down at CSU Pueblo team camp. Um, and so uh, we know each other very, very well. Uh, I don't think our kids, you know, I wouldn't say intimidated, but we, we uh, I think they're embracing the challenge of going to Pueblo and competing against a good football team. Um, they have some very good athletes, um, but we're excited to get after them. So obviously other players are going to have to step up this week. This has not been just the Noah Roper show. However, him being there has certainly taken off, taken some pressure off of other people, opened some things up. They're going to have to do it without him this week. Let's take a look at some key players in this game. And uh, for Erie, well, first off, there's the matchup. Saturday, 1 p.m., Dutch Clark Stadium in Pueblo. Should be a really good one. But the key players, uh, it starts with Gavin Mendoza, the quarterback. Uh, 527 yards. He's only thrown 38 passes this season. And uh, that's probably going to have to change. As, uh, as Coach Cooper said, they may have to rely on the pass a little bit more in this one. But when he has thrown it, it's been pretty good. Uh, nine touchdowns. Only one interception, he can run it as well. Uh, Caleb Fearman, uh, the wide receiver, 332 yards and three touchdowns this season on only 12 catches. So he's done a good job there. Also three interceptions on defense. They're going to need to replace Noah on defense as well because he's so good there. Now the running back, uh, Chad mentioned Tyler Gardner, 
325 yards and six touchdowns. Not too bad, considering he hasn't run the ball a whole lot. So that's a kid that's going to have to step in and uh, really fill the shoes of Noah Roper this season at the running back position. Nathan Hackney on defense. This, this team plays good defense, uh, holding opponents under 10 points per game. 11 tackles for loss, three interceptions, and two fumble recoveries for Nathan this season. Now, Pueblo East, Kane Medrano is their key player, and uh, that kid's going to UCLA, or at least he's committed to UCLA, UCLA right now. Uh, one of the more talented wide receivers and defensive backs in the state. Uh, he's approaching 1,000 yards receiving with 17 touchdowns. Also runs the ball a little bit, returns kicks, and yeah, he plays a little defense. 90 tackles, seven interceptions. Like I said, he's uh, on his way to UCLA, so a pretty good player there. Their quarterback that Erie is very familiar with and teams around here are familiar with is Luke Andrada, 2,600 yards passing, 29 touchdowns, and only three interceptions. He's also run for 744 yards and 11 touchdowns, one of the better dual threat quarterbacks in Class 3A. Now defensively, uh, Joe Padula, over 100 tackles, 11 tackles for loss, four sacks, three interceptions, two fumble recoveries. So they play a little defense over there at Pueblo East as well. But we were able to catch up with the quarterback for the Tigers, Gavin Mendoza, to talk about uh, that team trying to recover without Noah Roper and uh, the challenge he has and kind of the excitement he has of stepping into more of a lead role this week against Pueblo East. The mood has been really good, actually. Um, obviously, we lose the best running back in the state, and, I mean, we're still going to go out there and fight. We, we have a ton of seniors that have done great things for this program, and um, I think that people shouldn't count us out because we're still who we are, and we're going to do what we do best. That's kind of been the mood this week is, like, we're, we've prepared for whatever happens this whole year, and we everybody works so hard to get here, and we're not just going to let it go down just because Noah went down. We're going to fight for him and do it for him. Yeah, I love, I, I mean, obviously I've, I'm pretty, like it's hard losing Noah, but I mean, I love the pressure, and I'm going to accept it and do my best, and we have a saying, row the boat, and everybody's just going to row the boat a little more this week, and we're all going to do our part. Yeah, we're very confident. Um, you know, we we all work hard and we all prepared for this and we, we wanted to see them and we're, we've been looking forward to it. And I feel like this is a matchup that even with Noah, we can still take head on. Tell you what, without Noah Roper, the odds are probably against Erie to uh, win this game. But that team, I sense, is very determined to go out and prove that they are not a one-man show, that they're a pretty good team all around. They got to the state championship game last year. They're aiming to get back there again this year. So it should be interesting to see what they can do down at Pueblo East. So between Erie and Skyline, lots of good football coming up this weekend, both on the road, uh, but still some good football. And uh, we'll hopefully come back next week to talk about a couple of state championship matchups with those teams. So that'll do it for us this week. Uh, we want to thank uh, Blaine uh, Robinson and Don Girton for all the behind the scenes work they do on the show, as well as Blaine and Tim Ellis for getting our video for us this week. Also, check out BocoPreps.com and the Longmont Times Call. They'll get you up to date on everything going on in high school sports. And also like us on Facebook. Check us out on the web at LongmontChannel.com where, where you can watch this or any other programs you like here on Channel 8. And as always, we want to thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you again next week.